Hello everybody and welcome to another Minecraft video brought to you by Rob's Mind. And today we're going to be taking a look at this automatic sugarcane farm that I have right behind me, except this one's a little bit different. It uses something called a zero tick technique that you can find in the Java edition of Minecraft. Although we don't have zero tick pistons in this game, we can still make use of speeding up the sugarcane a whole lot. As you can see, this sugarcane grows practically instantly compared compared to the uh two years that it takes to get one stock in regular Bedrock Edition Minecraft. So, <clears throat> going around this thing, let's, uh, let's actually take a look at this and s you guys see how fast it's producing. How many sugar canes do you think that this thing is going to produce by the end of this video? Probably around 15 minutes or so, 12 minutes. Uh, let's take a look at this circuit real quick. As you can see, that powers all the pistons. We've got the observer that detects when the tall sugar cane grows right here, and then we've got it running into a repeater locking mechanism right up there. It just locks it so that it doesn't turn that top one into a redstone clock. And then down here, we have this contraption right there that will toggle our pistons back and forth. <clears throat> this right here, whenever you turn it off, it also uh, power unpowers your powered rail that the hopper minecart sits on because I absolutely hate it when hopper minecarts just perpetually travel back and forth. So we have a button to send it through and get your last bit. If you don't want that feature, delete that repeater and delete that button out of the design. That's really all you've got to do. Uh, with all of that, let's go ahead and take a look at the materials we're going to need to build this. We're going to be looking at 14 regular pistons, 7 sticky pistons, 10 redstone torches, 3 hoppers, 23 redstones, uh, 11 redstone repeater, 30 glass blocks, 2 redstone comparators, 37 circuit blocks of your choice, 1 observer, 1 redstone lamp, 1 lever, 2 rails, 6 powered rails, 1 minecart with hopper, 1 button, uh, an infinite water source, you will be placing 7 water source blocks, 7 sand, or you can use dirt, uh, stairs, w at least one sugar cane, two chests, and if you're building it the way I built it, this is 46 spruce planks, 32 acacia logs, and 29 quartz blocks. So we'll just go ahead and grab some of the materials that we're going to be needing to build this thing, and then we will just do that. We will hop right on over and start building this. I am going to do this all in one take so that you guys can know that I'm not cheating out on the sugarcane efficiency. Oh, speaking of that, this farm is off. So let's go over here and turn this thing back on real quick. There we go. Now that's collecting sugarcane again. And let's start the tutorial. The first thing you will need to do is place seven blocks in a line, just like that. All right, and then one, two, three, four, five powered rails, and two regular rails, just like this. After that, we're going to place a double chest. That's how I'm going to do it anyways. You guys may want to beef up the storage on this thing, because, it, like I said, it gets ridiculous rates. Uh, but we'll go ahead and place a hopper on the back side of this with a powered rail on top of it. Next, we are going to power these powered rails down here by placing a redstone torch. You guys could alternatively use a lever or something like that. And then I'm going to place seven circuit blocks right behind my quartz and put seven pistons facing up on top of those. Next we'll place seven redstone torches on the back of those pistons and seven repeaters running into the circuit blocks under the pistons. Next is a little bit of a tricky part because we are going to get pistons on top of these redstone torches so we will place three blocks up like this and a piston on its face and then I will just go ahead and place pistons on that one side, all the way down. So you should end up with something that looks kind of like this here. After that, I'm going to go ahead and build some of this up a little bit. We'll go ahead and build it just kind of in this formation here. Then over here, we're going to build up just like this. One, two, three, four. And then five, just like that. Sorry, I gotta think of how to build this a little bit. All right, four blocks up on this one. Perfect. Well, that is that is what we want. 
And next we are going to grab some stairs. I'm just going to keep using quartz. You can use whatever you want. And we're going to place them upside down. I'm placing them upside down from the back so that they look full block, like full blocks from the front side of this. So that's seven, just like that. Then I'm going to grab my quartz blocks again. Just kind of surround these stairs because that is actually, we're going to waterlog all of those stair blocks. And that will be our water sources for the sugar cane. So we got this all cleaned up a little bit. Next we can go ahead and add, I'm going to use sand. You can use uh, dirt alternatively. I think that sugarcane does grow a little bit faster on sand, but with this method, I don't believe it matters too much. Then I'm going to waterlog all seven of those stair blocks, just like that. You'll notice that they'll get a shade darker whenever you put a water block in them, and that's how you'll know that you got your water block in there. Next thing that I am going to do is just kind of pretty this thing up a little bit. I'm going to do a frame around it with the spruce planks and fill in the glass where the glass should go. So the glass will be nine blocks wide, just like that. And then that's the two ends will be three blocks tall and everything in the middle will be four blocks tall. That is how I'm designing it anyways. So the glass pattern should look like that. And then I will just surround all of this with the spruce planks just kind of like this. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Now that we got that, we're going to take these acacia logs. Like I said, use whatever building materials you want. This is just kind of what I played around with this time, and I thought it looked pretty good. So there we go. Acacia logs, like that. Then I count up, or er, uh, over, one, two, three, four, on the fourth block. Go ahead and build up three. And then I just connect it all like that. <clears throat> Should end up with like a 3x3 three three area right here. We're going to place a ring of 8 blocks right here. If you don't care about having a redstone lamp in the middle, you don't have to have one. But I like the redstone lamp. It looks pretty cool. Let's me know when I've got my farm on or off. Yada yada. Uh, here you'll notice I did forget to place the... Hopper minecart before I went ahead and sealed this up, so we'll go ahead and throw the hopper minecart in there. Let it park itself. There we go. Then I also did not leave a space open for my sugar cane to be planted, so we're going to open that back up real quick. Right now, of course, I won't be able to plant the sugar cane because I haven't truly gotten the water source block behind that sand yet. So... The next thing we are going to do is just get a few more materials in our hands, and we are going to, uh, let's see, we're going to throw in the sticky pistons for the backside that will actually be breaking our sugar cane. So back here, one diagonal from your stairs, place seven sticky pistons. These could be regular pistons if you want them on top of your stair blocks. I just personally like the uniform look like this once it's all done. So we'll go ahead and put spruce planks right here, seal it all up, give it a nice roof. Then right there in that one uh, little hole right there, that's where our observer is going to go. But first we'll go ahead and chuck this redstone lamp in, throw a lever on the face of that. <clears throat> then we'll actually just build the hopper clock to go ahead and start uh, harvesting our sugar cane, getting it to grow really fast. So here we go. We've got the hoppers feeding into one another. We're going to put three redstone leading up into a block that's touching one of those hoppers. Redstone torch right there. That has now locked our hopper clock. Throw a any old item in one of those hoppers, the unlocked one. Then you will go ahead and put a comparator running out of the hoppers with a repeater there. Then seven circuit blocks with redstone on top of all of them running into the back of those repeaters. Now if we flick this, we should see our pistons will actually begin to cycle. And that's good. That's what we want. So we'll turn it off. Now that our pistons have actually cycled a few times, we can go ahead and plant our sugar cane. Seems kind of weird, but that is how you get the water blocks in the back of the uh, sand that we've got right here. 
So there we go. Our sugar cane is all grown, or is all planted. And so that is all set up. If we flick that lever, that will actually grow our sugar cane almost instantly. Uh, but the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is set up this little comparator running out of this hopper right here. And that will detect any items flowing into that hopper. I'm going to run that into a block with a redstone torch on top. Then we will put a block on top of the torch and redstone on top of that block right there, which will actually be powering our powered rail. So see, our minecart is moving perpetually now. But then if we go ahead and pull a repeater off of this, it'll turn off our redstone lamp. That means our machine is off. It also is <clears throat> sending that repeater signal, completely unpowering our hopper minecart. So that's how I like it. I don't like that thing running back and forth unless I really want it to be. So here we go as a little test run. We got it going. We, it grew the sugar cane just fine. Now all we have to do is set up the harvesting system. So we're going to do that by placing an observer looking at those sugar cane. <laughs> then we need a block running out, or a block behind that observer. We're going to pull a repeater coming out of that block. The repeater is going to run into a block. Then over here, we're just going to build a 2x2 two two platform. Put redstone in an L just like that, and a repeater running back into that repeater, the side of it. So whenever that observer fires, it is actually going to fire one time only uh, because that second repeater will actually lock it into place so we don't end up with a perpetual clock just running once we update the observer. So next, I guess all that's left to do is cause an update to that observer. So we'll just remove that top sugarcane. There we go. Everything harvested. Go ahead and seal it all up. And that's it. That's all done. All we got left to do is go ahead and run our hopper minecart, make sure that everything's growing and functioning properly, and it is. Minecart's going. Perfect. We are getting sugarcane at quite a rapid rate compared to how you normally get sugarcane. And then all we really have to do, if you want to put the last part on it, is throw a button right there. And so what will happen is, if you don't want it running, but you've realized that you left some behind, there you go. You hit the button, it just zooms back and picks it all up. So now let's go check out and see how much sugarcane we happen to produce at this other farm. And holy cow, we got quite a bit. That is 18, 19 and a half stacks of sugarcane. That is 1,248 pieces of sugarcane in right around 10 minutes with this farm. If you guys did find this video useful, please do hit that like button, drop me a comment, and please do subscribe to the channel. It helps me a lot. This has been Rob's Mind, and I'm out.